so anyways, pretty much all animals are more closely related to us than insects. Another fu thing I found interesting is a songbird that is somewhere in the plains of America. I forget the name of this bird, but it was a bird with a non-apparent menstrual cycle, uh, which means the male cannot exert greater control and protection over the woman during those times because he doesn't know when it's happening. The way these uh, birds choose a mate is that the males hold territory and they defend the territory through song against other males. Uh, and the male is the nest builder. He spends a great deal of effort traveling around his territory finding the best twigs, hairs, feathers, moss, etc. to craft a an enclosed nest. So the male builds a home. The females travel from territory to territory and they check out these homes. And they judge the male for uh, to choose a lifelong partner based on these constructed nests and how they feel they'll stand up to weather, etc. They even will kick the tires, so to speak. They'll kind of pull at loose threads at the nest uh, to see how, how the structural integrity holds up. Uh, when a woman not likes, a, when a female bird likes a nest, and this is only this one per particular species I'm speaking about, certainly not all songbirds are like this, they will bond with that male, they will move into the nest, and they will basically stay with that partner for the rest of their lives, uh, until one of them dies or what have you. Now in studying these birds, these scientists, through their own little tricky scientific means, were able to calculate the menstrual cycle of these birds. And they noticed something very suspicious and peculiar. That when their charts said that the female bird was in heat, at those times they weren't seeing that bird around in the male's territory, which of course the scientists were monitoring the nest and the male's territory. Um, they weren't seeing her. And what they realized is that when the female is in heat, she travels to other territories to find a male to breed with. Now, this is completely separate from the home building exercise of choosing a life partner. They go out and they look for other males. And at this point, they're not interested in a nest. They already have a nest secured. They have, you know, a male bird waiting in that territory for them to return. And they go out and seek the male within their range, but certainly in another bird's territory. The male with the best plumage or perhaps the best song and they mate with this male and then return to their partner's territory to nest and lay eggs. This, this specific example really bothered me when I heard it because I think this perhaps is the model that human society is most related to. Um, we certainly praise monogamy in human culture. Now there are some some cultures that believe in multiple marriages. Uh, usually this is multiple females for one male. But in most human cultures adultery is taboo. It's in the Bible. 
I'm sure it appears in a lot of other religions. Loyalty to one's partner. These are all promoted through through our words, through our thoughts. But they certainly are not followed in our actions. Our divorce rate is incredibly high. Most of this is due to adultery. Uh, people being unfaithful. It's really horrifying. But, of course, any one species does not have to be our model. Part of the benefit of being human is that we do have reason. Uh, we have more control of our actions than most of the beasts of the world. Certainly we'd like to think so. We can think through things. We don't have to react on an instinctual level. Uh, we can override that with conscious thought. Uh, and certainly there are plenty of other models in the animal kingdom that we could look at for more positive role models. <clears throat> 